brother. Hi, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful. It is the final night of winter 2024. We are saying goodbye to the winter of 2024, and it is going to be 38 degrees here. And now one of the coldest nights of the year will happen one hour after springtime arrives uh, here in Dundalum, Florida on this gorgeous, I think it is a Tuesday night, March 19th, 2024. But guys, it is that time again. The uh, the Smothers Brothers <laughs> of the Lugosphere uh, have, have been served up. Uh, Tommy. That uh, we cannot let pass w w w w without some comment, amplification, clarification, hopefully a little bit of dark, acerbic, uh, ironic humor, but I want to uh, welcome aboard my my uh, co-conspirator in the Dumasphere, uh, Dr. Elliot Jacobson, come on and say hi to the folks. And, uh... Hi, Sam. Uh, you know, this is, this is just the strangest moment of time that we're in right now. I mean, aside from the whole planet being fucked, I mean, completely off the rails with, with what's going on. Even without on. that, it would be a strange moment. Probably. Yeah, we have essentially people going against what has been like the mainstream uh, uh, communication points that have been sort of put out by every cli major climate scientist and climate science body and organization over the last decade. We now have an article where people are saying none of that is true. <laughs> None of it, right? Well, this is uh, it, it, somehow I, I I managed to let it go about the recent decision to say we're not in the Anthropocene because we can't agree when it began. So we're not in it. Everyone knows goddamn well we're in the Anthropocene. But since it did not happen on June 5th, 1952, at 4.30 in the afternoon, we're not in it. That, that's absolutely absurd. And that somehow, well, I, I didn't keep my mouth shut, but I did. But, but somehow I kept from calling you to invite you to weigh in on that one. I, I don't know how. I was just so busy with other shit in my life. But I can't let this one pass. Uh, so anyway, guys, what we're talking about here, before we go one step further, what Elliot and I are talking about, I did a video on my channel, Collapse Chronicles, and Elliot's channel is the other CC of the Domosphere Climate Casino. I did a video last night on this article uh, from Salon Magazine, as you can see, titled, Will Earth Hit a Climate Tipping Point? If you have not read, if you did not listen to my video, if you have not read that article, you really need to hit the pause button. And it's a long involved article and read the article, okay? Stop listening to us and read the article and you will get a lot more out of the next, uh, I don't know, hour of, uh, of your time. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to let you guys go and do that. But for those of you who have read it and uh, try, trying to figure out what to do with it, I, we're not just going to sit here and reread the entire article. You can do that yourself. We're just going to look at some of the salient points in it and the reason that we're paying this more attention than we might be is that uh, the venerable James Hansen uh, is one of the major people. Uh, obviously, James Hansen has been smoking the hopium pipe with Michael Mann. Yeah. Are, are, yeah. are you as shocked or, or, or not shocked that Michael Mann's name was Nowhere mentioned in this article. I see Michael Mann's fingerprints all over this story. Although he did, I think Michael Mann, for once in his life, decided not to. I guarantee you they call Michael. I, I guarantee you 
they called Michael Mann, but he thought in this case, he was going to let James Hansen do his bidding for him. Do you kind of agree or disagree with that? Well, I, I actually think that um, James, uh, that Michael Mann might be enough of a scientist to acknowledge there really are tipping points. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, would, there is just that possibility that he disagreed with with uh, James Hansen. Well, in this he's one always case. disagreeing with James Hansen. I, Michael Mann is always saying, so maybe... Maybe we need to get Michael Mann on the phone and say, Michael Mann, what do you think of Jay? Or, 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 so we need to get Michael Mann's uh, opinion of this. But anyway, we're not going to we're not going to sit here and read the article. But I want you, Elliot, I'll let you read just the opening lead to this long involved story because I think we we've discovered a lot of the problem about the article in the opening sentence so read the opening sentence elliot and give me your opinion of it and i will weigh in uh afterwards so read the sentence i i'm not sure i i can get through this sentence without um you know, puking or something. I mean, honestly, do your best. The, the, the opening sentence to the first comma, all right, to the yeah, first yeah, comma. You don't even have to get to the period. No, no, there, it's a long sentence. The first, people who follow climate change are often told there is a tipping point. All right, go, ahead. Um, go to the go to the period. Yeah, a single moment after which it will be too late to reverse the damage caused by our excessive use of fossil fuels. So it is clear from this right away that the author does not understand what a, what a tipping point is. A tipping point is not a singular thing where the climate has tipped. It's not like yesterday the climate was this way and today the climate is that way. And I don't know who the people would be who are telling this thing. I mean, who is going oh. to go out and say, hey, you know, I mean, which scientist, which climate scientist, where is the quote from a climate scientist saying there is a climate tipping point? There, there's obviously one group, which I mentioned on that other channel day. I, I, I was thinking, you know, I, I had, uh, okay, Elliot Jacobson, have you ever in your entire life said that there is a climate tipping point, a sing, tipping point singular, a singular moment, a singular moment when we're fucked up to the point we're not fucked. And, and then at 4.45 p.m., you, you know, we are fucked. Have you ever in your entire life made such an absurd statement? I, I'm thinking December 31st, 2024. Five, you know, might be the, the moment. I, you I, know, I, it, it, it's just a crazy sentence. It, it I mean, here's the thing. I got to tell you this quick little story. So okay. I went out to lunch with this Doomer. I mean, super nice guy, right? And yeah. and he said to me, he said, it feels like the climate is past a tipping point. And I'm like, like, what tipping point? He said, well, the climate is past. What tipping point? I so mean, what did he say? I mean there, it's not like the tipping point is that, oh, it's 72 degrees outside when it should be 60 or there's no bees or, or you know, there's a flood and uh, there's a heat wave in Brazil. I mean, those are not tipping points. And, and so this conception that's, that there is this singular event, you know, beyond which everyone with common sense will now say, oh, the climate is tipped, Right. It, it's just a, a um, on its face, it it's just shows ignorance of, of a huge area of climate science that, you know, most doomers are completely knowledgeable about. You know, oh, I'm okay. very well, surprised. There, there is a, a glaring exception. There yes. is one group and yes. we all know who yes. they are. Yes. And, I, and yes. I'm not going to waste much of this interview talking about them, but I'm going through, have I ever heard a, a Doomer say this? And, and I, I've interviewed like 200 people. I have never heard anybody say this ever. And I have never said it. I don't know anyone. 
there is one group, and we all know the group. It is the near-term human extinction group of clueless morons talking about the infamous blue ocean event, that that is going to be the singular tipping point that we are not coming out of, that the ice in September of whenever, let's call it September 2024, is going to be less than 1 million square kilometers. And the spring of 2025, the entire globe's uh, agriculture system is going to collapse and billions of people will starve to death and civilization will collapse within one year of there being a blue ocean event. So not count, and I don't count that. I completely discount that. I have from day one, I see no evidence that even if that does happen, that is going to result in the starvation of, uh, of 4 billion people within six months. Not counting that. Okay, and I don't count that. I have never heard any Doomer with a brain talk about a singular moment when uh, things are, are going to be this completely, we're not coming back from it. So so there, um, there's even a worse problem with this. If you could believe the sentence has another problem, and that is that it says um, <laughs> that after which it will be too late to reverse the damage by our excessive use of fossil fuels. It's already too late to reverse <laughs> the damage of our excessive use of fossil fuel, right? I mean, it's we're already... Into this and we're, we haven't even gotten through the first sentence of this damn article yet. I mean, it's already too late. You know, <laughs> the, the warming that's in the pipeline, which is a oh, James God. Hansen paper, right? saying that we're going to get, I mean, his upper end prediction is 10 C of warming, but I mean, even the best climate scientists out there are saying we're not, we're going to sail past 2 C, right? So sailing past 2 C is going to trigger actual tipping points, right? Of which there are 16 of them, according to Johan Rockström. So, you know, there are, there's an actual list of climate tipping points, and this will trigger those things. You know, so yes, we have already gone too far so that at least four or five of these tipping points are absolutely going to gonna get triggered. It is already too late. So yeah, there's not one singular one like today civilization will exist and tomorrow it's doom and extinction. But there's a whole spectrum of these things that we've already, uh, um, you know, sold out to. There's no way we're going to avoid these things. So. This is the essential problem with, with this article. It gets back to semantics. In the first sentence, they talk about a singular event. And then as the article progresses, they just slip into making it plural. That there's going, I, I do, I, I don't have it, but what would they, at some point way down in the article, I like the term uh, a constellation that 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 instead of tipping points. So I got it right here. I'll read it to you. Something. I'll read this one to you. Uh, All right. The Earth's climate is far more complicated than such framing suggests. Instead of seeing uh, seeking a single moment when a figurative switch is flipped, people should look for a constellation of warning signs. There are already many signs that the planet's <laughs> rising temperature is leading to ecological devastation. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to change the name of my channel to Constellation, Constellation of Warning Signs Chronicles. All right. Uh, come on, people. This is hair splitting semantics that is just come into common usage. A, a constellation of warning signs. I have my, I always use the analogy of a toxic stew, it, 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 it is what I call it, that all the energy that people 
go into trying to, you know, to parse out one ingredient that if we could just get rid of this, you know, capitalism or whatever, I, I'm always reminded of this absolute clueless moron named Mike Adams, the health ranger. He's one of Ad, uh, Alex Jones' buddies in Austin, Texas. After Fukushima, this man was seriously claiming the day after Fukushima that the Northern Hemisphere was going to be uninhabitable by the end of 2011. It, it, he was calling it, 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 he was calling it the, you, you know, the, the meat cleaver, uh, a, a, a preposterous statement, absolutely preposterous statement. And I think he lives in Austin, Texas, not in Tierra del Fuego, as far as I know. Uh, but this is just an idea. This is what I, I, I think maybe they're referring to that that they're they're talking about people that clueless uh, talking about a a single event. Uh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, do you want to have fun with uh, with, with 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 James Hansen? Of, of course, what got me going and 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 and. and the big score for Salon was getting James Hansen on, yeah. on and uh, getting him to waffle about. Uh, Look, I, I kind of I kind of understand his issue. All right. I'm kind of sympathetic with him. And maybe you are, too, just a little bit. Right. Because, I mean, the. People really are, as he says, misusing and abusing the idea yeah. of a tipping point, right? It's it's sort of one of these things where, where the terminology is just thrown around so often that as a climate scientist or just an educated guy like you are, right, you, you hear people using these things in ways that don't make sense to you over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's the majority of the times you hear it. You hear very few people using the uh, terminology uh, climate tipping point correctly, right? Or in a correct setting. So, you know, it must be very frustrating as an academic like he is in this area to hear people constantly misrepresenting it. But then he just says, I mean, he is saying stuff though that is just like, like so stretching to not use the word, right? So so here's one of the things he said um, uh, later in the paper, right? So So, yeah, sure. I give him credit for the opening paragraph where he kind of yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. you know, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but he he goes deep into it later in the paper. Let me read one. There is a tremendous store of carbon and permafrost, which, if all released to the atmosphere, would have a devastating climate impact. Yeah, of course, right. Hansen said he explained how the carbon dioxide that's released by melting permafrost. They should have said methane uh, amplifies the global warming caused by human-made greenhouse gases. But that would not happen all at once. Quote, it is rather slow and can be cut off if we begin to cool <laughs> the planet. There you go. That's no small task, of <laughs> course. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, 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 I admit my, that my I brain like exploded. probably studied the, the, the carbon bomb more, more than I, I have. At this point, can we stop the melting of the permafrost? Um, can we stop? Yeah, sure. All we need to do is have every human alive split their wrists. Uh, well, they're uh, okay. I mean, that would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be. <laughs> it would. It, it would be a good start in, in the right. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, but seriously, right, right, yeah. Sam? Can we stop the permafrost from this car? So, so here's another one of these things that must be so frustrating as a climate scientist to hear so many people get wrong. You know, oh, the the methane bomb has already gone off. Oh, you know, we already have the uh, Siberian permafrost. We have the uh, you know the East Siberian Arctic Sea permafrost. We have the Canadian, you know, and and that's where all the methane's coming from. But but so far, no. The answer is no. That's not where it's coming from, right? They do these carbon isotope studies, so that's not where it's coming from. But what is true is that the boreal permafrost, right, is is one of the top five tipping points. So if you ask which tipping points are going to happen the fastest on the planet, you know, given given the heating that's yeah. going on, 
that is in the top five, right? So you do think the melting perm? I mean, I certainly think it's one of the what 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 we constellation of warning signs. Yes, it's it's in the constellation it's in the of warning constellation. Signs. Yes, yes, um, melting um, melting the permafrost and releasing that methane is, that is in the constellation. That is, that is in the in that is in the constellation. It's going to be a huge warning sign when uh, methane suddenly goes through the roof and the planet heats up by six C. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty big. Thing. That that'll that'll be in the constellation. Uh, you know, this this, uh, and 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 his comment about. He's not sure that obliterating a species off the face of the planet would count as a tipping point. Now, let me read that one. Let me read that one. That if if you like, read, read the. Let me read that one for the yeah, benefit read of the, the exact audience. context of the quote. Right, because yeah, another another one where your head explodes. Right, I mean this yeah. this article has multiple head exploding <laughs> moments, multiple head explosions, a constellation of head explosions <laughs> during the article. Hansen added that mass <laughs> extinctions are certainly irreversible, although they may not be counted as tipping points exactly. Quote <laughs> from Hansen: Extermination of species is practically irreversible, and some ecosystems. Right. So practically irreversible. And some ecosystems can collapse if key species go extinct. And we are in the midst of a mass extinction event, Hansen said. I think what he meant when I read that. Uh, OK, what do you think he meant? I th think he meant like what we're trying to do with the woolly mammoth DNA, that, that if you keep a, a store of DNA of these extinct species, that it may be possible at some future time to regenerate the species uh, back into existence by virtue of some, you know, cloning or DNA uh, science. So I think that's what he's referring to. Uh, but but for, for, for someone of James Hansen's obviously intelligence and education to to call the obliteration of a of an entire species off the face of a planet, practically irreversible, but not necessarily a tipping point. Now, did the extinction of the passenger pigeon throw some system out of order? It probably did. But if you are a passenger pigeon, okay, <laughs> I, I, I assure you, that they consider when Martha died in the Chicago Zoo in 1914, any extinct passenger pigeon would tell you we hit a tipping point in the Chicago Zoo in 1914 when Martha died. Okay, that was that was the tipping point, at, at least for us. And 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 for someone to 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 sit there and make a a statement that absurd I, I'm embarrassed for the man Elliot well I'm on he, record he, saying that you know I I want to distinguish what a tipping point is in the context of climate change as opposed to what a tipping point is in the context of a species right yeah so so Rockstrom <laughs> right with the guy with the planetary boundaries like one of the planetary boundaries is the biosphere right the living the, the animals, the, the plants, the fish, the, you know, the bacteria. So what is true is that there are these things called keystone species. So, you know, but for the existence of that species, the entire, uh, that entire regional biosphere would collapse. An example of that would be coral, right? So coral is a keto keystone species. And coral is also, um, you know, getting obliterated right now around the planet by by this mass massive ocean heat going that's ongoing. So it is true that that an individual species is not you know technically a tipping point if it goes extinct in sort of the IPCC definition, but the death of a of a species can have uh, an effect on an entire part of the planet. It, yeah, yeah, you know, so so you know, we're in the fifth 
chlor uh, uh, coral bleaching event in the Great Barrier Reef in the last eight years. And you know the, the science says that it takes 10 years to recover from one leaching event. You know, we've had five in the last eight years. So, you know, we are we are the pretty much the entire ocean biosphere around, you know, coastal continents around the planet and the equatorial regions depends on these reefs. And, you know, uh, elephants would be another example or lions or, you know, uh, vultures, you know, where if these species were to go extinct, we would have a huge, uh, um, the entire collapse of a regional biosphere. Now, now humans are an anti-keystone species. We're, we're as far <laughs> from a, we're the, the antithesis of a keystone species and we would go extinct. Uh, <laughs> every other from vultures to elephants to coral <laughs> would, 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 would be having a, a Hey, I, I do want to mention there's speaking of rocks from that uh, the Guardian comes out today, which uh, will be my rant tomorrow with an excellent article talking about uh, how 180 degree opposite from this article. And they actually in the article uh, talk about tipping points in, in, in the Guardian article, just clearly uh t talking uh, uh, uh about tipping points but it uh, let it, me it, let me actually throw a picture just just to be sort of correct uh in a academic way let me share my screen here and show everyone um this is from rockstrom this is from uh the um institute that he comes from uh their image and so I just want to make sure to give them credit for this. But this actually lists the, the major tipping points around the planet, right? Right here, you can see yeah, that. Yeah. And so what are those tipping points? Well, the, the ones that, that are happening right now, right? right they are actually happening, uh, are the ones that you see between one and a half and two degrees Celsius, which is where we are at this moment in terms of global warming, are the Greenland ice sheet, the uh, boreal uh, permafrost, right? That's Canada that had, believe it or not, its warmest winter ever by almost eight degrees Fahrenheit, right? Right. It's like the kind, like, like not just a little bit warmer than it ever was before, eight degrees on average warmer than it ever was before. The West Antarctic uh, ice sheet and the uh, coral reefs is the other thing I mentioned, right? So. So those are the things that are happening right now as we speak, the the permafrost, the ice sheets, and uh, the, the coral. So, I mean, this is not some sort of academic discussion about what's going to happen when or what might happen or what constitutes a tipping point. These are tipping points that are, are going on right now. And I mean, one of the problems with, with this article is that um, it wants to say that that a tipping point doesn't happen all at once. Therefore, it's not really a tipping point. And let me just give an example. Like, like this right here, you know, if, if I could balance it, then it tips. And it's kind of all at once. But the point of a tipping point for the climate is that we have um, multiple stable states. In other words, they're not just like one state where this thing can, can occur. There's multiple stable states. And it takes a lot of energy to get between those states. And one of, you know, for example, melting an ice sheet, right? It's perfectly fine for that ice sheet, that, that Greenland to have all that ice. And it's perfectly fine for it to ha not have any ice. But once it doesn't have any ice, it is really, really hard <laughs> get it to have ice again, right? So, so multiple stable states and critical also to that definition is that changing from one state to another creates global uh, yeah. impacts on, on the climate and the biosphere. So it doesn't matter if it takes five years or 50 years or a thousand years. Once we set in motion the feedbacks that are gonna result in the tipping point, it's too late. So we could say that, oh yeah, we could stop the Greenland ice she sheet you know, today. No, we can't. It's already done. It's just it's just a question of time. It's already done. 
You know, uh, okay, uh, uh, a couple more things on the tipping points, then we're going to get into the whole other side of this article. There's, there, there's two main parts uh, of this video, but I, 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 I want to touch on, on a couple of more of the, of the head explosions, of the constellation of head explosions. This guy, uh, Kenneth Trenber, I think, is yeah. uh, I guess he's written over 600. I, I, I've actually read some of his stuff on my uh, on my channel, I, I I love this one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a direct quote. This is the reporter paraphrasing. Trenberg listed off variables that could be viewed by future historians as tipping points but which may not be recognized as such by contemporaries living through them. I, I, I've tried to unpack uh, what, what the hell that means. I, I, I mean, we, we could have all, we, we, we could have all, that, that could be longer than our ain't gonna happen list, but is it the list of variables that could be viewed by future historians as tipping points. <laughs> um, big problem, right <laughs> off. There will not be any future historians. <laughs> that, that implies, yeah, it implies there will be future historians. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that implies so, irradiated cockroaches will become eventually a jelly, I mean, jellyfish. <laughs> jellyfish will eventually in 10 million years evolve in the future and, and they're gonna look back at the 21st century and say that was a damn good century that we would not be historians today if, if, those, if those damn humans hadn't set off all those tipping points in the 21st century and made us the gene pool for the next level. Of <laughs> all right, our, our cockroach overlords await our, our demise. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I no, no. what they're saying. I, I mean, but but they're but he's basically admitting I might have a blind spot because he is quoted as saying somewhere in here. This is a quote directly from the man. There are no real tipping points. Somewhere in this article, not far above there, you when they first introduced this trend bird, I, I there found are it. No real tipping points. Uh, okay, so so I mean, th this already tells you there's a bias, right? That the uh, Author of the article had a uh, you know a bias in mind and went out fishing for people to confirm his bias. Kevin uh, Kevin Trenberth, a distinguished scholar, da da da, explaining in an email to Salon that quote: "There are no real tipping points. There are times when the rates of change may increase substantially because of feedback, but it's not like a pencil balancing on its end that when uh, when touched it topples over." So he's misunderstanding the definition of a climate tipping point here. Yeah. I mean, he fundamentally does not understand that a climate tipping point is not saying it's gonna happen fast. What it's saying is that there are multiple stable states for this, this particular thing. And once you set in, in motion the trajectory from one state to another, it's unstoppable, right? It doesn't mean it's gonna happen over, it's like, like that is a super huge pencil, right? And that pencil is a hundred miles high, and so you might not notice that it's tipping because it's a hundred miles high. But the thing is tipping, right? And it's going to fall, and it might take a hundred years or fifty years, or you know, you talk about about sea level rise as an example of what future historians will regard as the tipping point. Sea level rise is not the tipping point. The tipping point is already named as the Greenland ice sheet and the yeah, West yeah, Antarctic yeah, ice yeah. sheet. And ultimately, the East Antarctic ice sheet after all the feedbacks, right? So, I mean, that that just sort of shows this level of not even paying attention to to you know some uh, weird thing about cockroaches you're inventing about future historians, right? I it's, I mean, it's Sam, it is it is <laughs> so poorly written. It is so bad. <laughs> this article is, I mean, it's so embarrassing for James Hansen, right? Oh, can so you imagine the this. amount of shit that he's eating? To, you have to, you, you know that man is getting a a, a well-deserved uh, triple dose of shit. Uh, yeah, 
I can't believe like like as we're talking about this, right? The absurdity <laughs> of what these people are saying is just like is compounding, right? I don't like to ever use the word exponential, but the damage to James Hansen's reputation as an academic is is decreasing exponentially as we read through this paper. I think it, I think it hit a tipping point. I, the, might, I think you're right. I, I yeah. think that James Hansen is looking for the tipping point in, in, in his career. It was uh, it was March 18, 2024. I mean, uh, did, did he even realize what he was contributing to? Right, uh, the piece of trash that he was contributing to when he said these things. Because if you actually read most of what Hansen said in isolation from this other stuff, it, it's not that far away. I mean, the thing about extinction, yeah, practically, ex you know, practically. <laughs> oh, okay, man, well, Sam, wanna, I, this is so sad. As a segue into the other part of this rant, uh, I I, 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 don't, I don't even know this woman's name. I had never heard of her. But can we find the number one head explosion in the article about the Amazon rainforest collapse? Probably it is going to collapse, but she does not necessarily consider the collapse of the Amazon rainforest to be irreversible. I, yeah, I found I found that. Let me read it. Okay. Um, so her name, her last name is Strobe, S-T-R-O-E-B-E. -E. Yeah. Uh, and she said, um, she uh, similarly, Strobe speculated that there could be a tipping point like event in the Amazon tipping rainforest. Tipping point like event, not a tipping point, a tipping point like, like event. <laughs> Not a tipping point. It's a tipping point <laughs> like oh event. Goodness. Okay. She does admit that there could be a tipping point like, like event. event. All right. In the other. Okay. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> if you can. It's hard, Sam. I mean, you crack me up. You're you're just <laughs> like okay, okay. So she speculated there could be a tipping point like event in the Amazon rainforest. If its area shrinks so much that can it, it cannot generate enough water vapor to support itself. Yeah. Strove said she isn't sure quote, quote, it's irreversible though. Yeah. She is not quote sure if that would be irreversible though. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, guys. This is just me, you know, but, but I, I know people have a hard time believing this, but I really was a I have five years of journalism training, and for many years, I, I actually was a professional journalist who would uh, who would interview hundreds of people. If, if someone said something to me that jaw droppingly, patently absurd, my 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 head would explode I, 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 as a journalist. Did the journalist who ever heard that this woman spout this absolutely absurd statement that any fourth grader knows is complete and utter horseshit, did they sit there, I, I think of the, uh, I call it the dashboard chihuahua, you, you know, with a little head bobbing, did, did, did this reporter have this woman say to him or her, whoever it was, that the collapse of the Amazon rainforest is not necessarily irreversible and, and, and not sit there and stop the presses and say, <laughs> what in the fuck are you talking about? You clueless moron. How did you ever get a degree in science to make a statement that patently absurd? What the fuck is going through her mind by stating that? So so you're <laughs> you're you're asking I'm asking me. you. I'm asking you, Elliot. Okay, okay. So, so here's what's going on in the Amazon, right? This is one of the sixteen. I want to know what's going on in her mind. I, I'm going to try and what's going on in the Amazon. I'm going to tell you what's going on in her mind. I've got <laughs> the it. Same thing. I've got. It. Okay. So, what's happening in the Amazon is that it's on fire right now. There's there's more fire than there's ever been in the Amazon. You know, yeah, they're not burning it, you know, to for uh, palm oil, 
and and beef, they're just it's just on fire, right? So the whole thing's going to burn down. It's going to get replaced with savanna. Once it gets replaced with savanna, it's going to change the whole hydrological cycle for the planet. But but he doesn't know if that's irreversible or not. Well, but <laughs> you know, here's what's true. Um, <laughs> Earth is actually in one of these Milankovitch cycles where in a hundred thousand years, okay. you know, it's gonna we're not gonna be able to do anything. It's gonna get cooler and and uh, it'll get so it's likely that you know maybe in half a million years the you know species will start regenerating. It is equatorial after all, and and I think what she's saying is that in the long run that part of the planet is likely to become a jungle again. On a, ge on a geological scale. On a level. geological scale. And, and this article does this a lot. It skips between human timeframes and geological yeah. timeframes. And they sort of, you know, they don't even tell you they're, they're doing that. But I have a feeling that's exactly what she's saying here right now, is that it is not irreversible on geological time scale. Okay, so she's not suggesting the that we're going to go out and plant a bunch of trees. We're, yeah, yeah, we're going to replant the Amazon. I mean, this <laughs> this this whole tree planting thing, you know, it's like like does anybody out there really think that planting trees is going to save save the planet? Right? It's I mean, the, the latest study I read on this, and this is just as an aside, right, is that because we're sort of planting monoculture forests, you know, to replace these things, they're actually the leaf, the, the uh, you know, the canopy is actually darker shades of green than the original canopy. So it's absorbing more heat. So the, the, net, re the net result of these, these tree plantings is to heat the planet even faster. It has taken me three days chainsaw down 200 trees and th th that's what i've been doing in the last i mean to chainsaw down 200 of those fucking trees uh and i'm and i'm thinking to myself out there today you know as i'm chainsawing tree after tree after tree, i'm like like what the hell if i actually had to plant these sons of bitches uh i, I i'd be out here for for, for the rest of for, for the rest of my life but anyway uh, all joking aside i've got i've got I, another i've got <laughs> let me, i've got another tipping point for you all right from this lady okay, before we segue into doomerism okay. yeah one one more all right one more right. you got to tell me how we're going to do this uh so the same lady says quote <laughs> the loss of Arctic sea ice in summer would be a tipping point, but it's not irreversible. <laughs> On a geological time scale, ice sheets have come and gone. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So yeah. she actually Same with said, rainforest. Yeah. So she's actually saying it that like like you know I'm sorry, global industrial civilization. You know you're totally fucked, but. You know, in a hundred thousand, maybe a million years, <laughs> everything will be fine. Uh, okay, well, I, I kind of hope. Uh, it sounds like you're giving her the benefit of the doubt. So you know, I'll, I'll try to join you. That she could not be that stupid to suggest that humans, in a human scale uh, time frame, would replant the Amazon rainforest. W with the what 100,000 species that are going to go down with all the trees uh that that somehow uh, we're we're going to get some uh some Noah's ark going on down there let me uh yeah well so she uses she says fine i mean we'll finish i can finish with she says the term forever a uh, nice by the way that's that's a nice view right there Sam i'm just telling you yeah, my armpit. Yeah. I'm trying to find the damn battery. There we go. All right. You forgot to plug it in. That's a good idea. Yes. But, All right. So she, she says the term forever means one thing for geologists and glaciologists and quite another to a person who wants to gaze upon the ice sheets with their own eyes. So, you know, I don't even know why that would be part of this, this article. Like nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with tipping points has to do with a million years from now. You know, this this is the collapse of global industrial civilization that we're witnessing right now today. Right. These are tipping points that are going to take place over the next hundred years. This is this is 
not as it's an irrelevant statement. So yeah, you know, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam, for um, bringing this piece of crap nonsense to my attention and having me spend a few minutes of my life actually well digest it. it it's been good for me because what it does is it, it sort of strengthens the viewpoint that that these folks are desperate to have collapse not happening they're absolutely desperate to have tipping points not happening they're desperate to uh -huh. be able to change the conversation to to say it's it's not really this bad Okay, so that will be our second to, to the whole second part of this. And way up in the beginning of the article, I think you might have read the sentence about uh, that that there's two things wrong with the tipping point, that it oversimplifies the science. And you find up towards the beginning about it oversimplifying the science and it, uh, let me... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yet many scientists do not like the term because they feel it oversimplifies the science or because it cultivates a fatalistic outlook. There you go. There you go. Which which, which is really what this story is about. And uh, this, this is just the latest example of shitting on doomers. This whole thing uh and, and now we can act, get over let, let's just well let, let's finish out that last story and then we'll go over to this one back up and read the very last story from uh the the, the closing two paragraphs and that will segue us in uh oh sam this is all right here goes here goes start out as meyer noted um as Meyer noted, this still emphasizes that the issue is very difficult to beat, but also established that it is not an impossible dilemma. In other words, a predicament. I worry about talking about climate change leading to civilization collapse or even human extinction will actually lead to fatalism and the thought that there is nothing society can do. So let's not worry about it. Climate change is a big challenge, but a solvable one. There you go. So yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we uh, it will lead to fatalism, and the thought that there is nothing society can do, and and it's not just the so society, but it's the individual actions as well. And, and, and this is really what it's all about. Is this is this fact that if you uh, can handle the truth and, and you want to point it out to people that you are you are the problem? It, it, it's us damn doomers that are uh, and 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 now James Hansen is climbing on the uh, shit on the doomer bandwagon. Uh, what's so bad? What, what's that song? What, what's so funny about peace, love, and happiness? What's so bad uh, 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 about fatalism? I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't personally know any doomers that are in a fetal position in the bottom of a dark closet. Yeah, yeah, shivering, <laughs> shivering, sucking their thumbs. You know. No, I have been more active since I became. <laughs> Now, I admit, sometimes this act of chopping down 200 trees since I became a doomer, but uh, this, call up your new article, and uh, I, I never did get a total number of times this man used the word action. Well, I, well, I did. Did you count it? I did count them. <laughs> so what this person, so what this article is about was the scientific study about communicating uh, about the cl climate change and what is the most effective communication methodology, what is the least effective communication methodology. And you know the, the whole point was um, if you communicate in the right way, you'll get people to take an action. There you go. And, and so, it, so above everything else, 
let's talk about these uh, eight or 10 different uh, communication strategies. And I'm just going to sort of flash this up here. But, but he, he did give Doomers a mixed review. He, he did admit we're pretty good about getting the message out, but he claims we're getting the wrong message out. We, we are pretty good at getting the message out that there's not a fucking thing that any one of us is going to do about it. I, I've been trying to bring this message out for years. There's not a goddamn thing that any human being on from an individual level to a global wide political level is going to do. Even if we could, we wouldn't. So that's but, been my message, and I think I've been pretty effective at getting that out. So, so what that is on this, uh, so, so in talking about climate change, which is of yeah. course only one part of the planetary boundaries, right? But in talking about cl climate change, um, what you're using is the quote negative emotions intervention, which is defined to be exposes participants to ecologically valid scientific facts regarding yeah. the impacts of climate change framed in a doom and gloom style of messaging that were drawn from different real world news and media sources. So that is, you know, you exactly. and uh, wow. me to a large extent as well. Um, and the question is, is um, how effective is that? All right. So I just have to tell you that this article attacks doomers from start to finish. It does. And um, what's interesting is what they actually um, sort of want to, to make the point about in this article is, um, so so the, the remarkable thing, okay, so there, there's two things. One is that as far as communication goes, the doom messaging, gets more feedback, more views, more shares, more watches than any of these other methodologies they describe. And All their right. research proves that that doom far and away is right. like, like the number one. <laughs> and then they conclude is that although doom is the number one way to generate, you know, response from an audience, it's also the number one least effective way of generating actual action on behalf of saving the planet. Now they use that word action and you ask me to yeah. count action. Now they never say what the action is in the article, right? How many times do they say the word action? They say it 16 times. 16. <laughs> and they say it with the and they say the word inaction twice. And they use these adjectives in describing the various actions. Okay, real. Real action, concrete action, personal action, individual level action, effortful action, climate action, and positive climate action. All right. Right? Now, now here's the- They never give an example of it. Uh, and they uh, never uh, give a single video. example. Six to, they had 16 opportunities to give one example. One example. Then I could have put this story in my Ain't Gonna Happen roundup on Friday. I <laughs> wish the fuck they had put 16 of them. Then I would have had 16 to add to my Ain't Gonna Happen. Uh, if roundup. you actually look at the research, they do have an action. All right? So I got to tell you what the action is. So, so when they were studying these these um, people, oh, right? What they what they said is, look, we're going to give you a computer screen, yeah. And every time you fill out a form, that we will plant a tree. We want you know, and they gave them some task to fill out some meaningless piece of paper that nobody cared about. And what they found out is that doomers, on average, planted less trees virtual trees because it's really you just had a computer yeah. screen filling out forms doomers on average planted fewer um virtual trees than any other communication style <laughs> and let me just say that's good on the doomers because we're smart enough to know that planting trees is absolute bullshit right <laughs> it is like a zero effective especially fruit trees i i i, I have to admit i Oh, I, I have given up on planting. A, a, a 64-year-old doomer does not plant fruit trees. I... Um, but I'll tell you, if they had said, as far as their action step, yeah. 
For each one of these forms you fill out, we will offer free sterilization to one individual so that they will not have children. Yes! <laughs> right? I've been filling out those sons of bitches all day long, man. You, you bet. <laughs> I would have carpal tunnel syndrome by the end of the day from filling out those damn forms. I mean, I mean, they just do not understand what climate <laughs> action is. So it's not that doomers don't want to do climate action. It's that that the thing that that doomers view as climate action is the one thing that that nobody would ever. Was, was it anywhere of keeping your pecker in your pants? Was it of anywhere of the action, the real concrete, uh, positive climate action that you could do? Keep your damn pecker in your pants. Was that in there? Oh uh, no. <laughs> But I mean, it is a really uh, interesting article because, uh, you know, it is just an all out uh, attack <laughs> on, on doomers above all else. And I mean, honestly, they, they give this chart. I just have to show you this chart. I'm going to bring it up here because it's just this thing is just fascinating to look <laughs> at. Right. So here is the actual chart. It's probably uh, uh, people are going to have to look at this thing, you know, freeze their screen. But. Uh, if you can look you, at this, can you thing, expand it a little bit or not? Um, uh, yes, yeah, as much as I can do right there. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but you know, if you look at negative emotions, right? Um, we're like, you know, all these things were at the bottom. But as far as number of trees planted, I just want to go to this number of trees. On average, a doomer would plant about four point eight trees, whereas someone using the most effective method. Of, of climate communication, according to these people, which is the scientific consensus. It is a scientific consensus. 99% of all scientists believe that. They're going to plant about 5.3 trees. So the <laughs> difference between a doomer and uh, you know, a scientist a half a tree. is a half a tree. <laughs> so... So that's that's what this is all about. I, 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 about, I like that. And I, and I am thinking of doing the writing a letter to future generations. What Tell us about that one. Uh, expand on writing a letter. What was the point of writing a letter to future generations? I, assuming um, there are future generations who are going to read your down. I might actually do this one. Um, so what does the research say about that one, about a doomer writing a letter to future general, which is kind of a contradiction in terms, I admit. So, so there's, you know, this is just one of those um, um, methodologies of intervention, right? So, so appealing to future generations is, is, you know, so when you talk about the different ways, like you might um, cast the climate change mess message, right? A letter to a future generation emphasizes how one's current actions affect future generations by asking participants to write a letter to a socially close child who will read it in 25 years when they're an adult, uh, describing your current actions towards creating a habitable planet. So I was getting sterilized before I had any future generations. So that, was my, that was my no, number one personal uh, responsibility action was preventing future generations from being born. So I don't have to write these goddamn letters. Well, to... well, just so you know, um, that is um, about 4.9 trees. So it's about a tenth <laughs> of a tree more than being a doomer, maybe two tenths of a tree. <laughs> This in uh, the fact that, that it, I'm a little bit embarrassed because again, my respect for Salon Magazine uh, tumbled yesterday and Resilience.org. I, I I mean, you know, Robert Jensen is, is a regular contributor to Resilience.org. Robert Jensen, if he looked at this, he he would be. You know, I wish we could bring Robert in he, the, sometime. The guy really is. Uh, I, I mean, he is a hoot. Uh, Jensen is a great guy. He he would be right in with this. A major doomer. Uh, but but he writes for Resilience.org, and I'm oh, no a little kidding. bit embarrassed at Resilience.org. But the fact that you see this shit in Salon Magazine and Resilience.org, now it's not like it's the Telegraph. 
that you, I mean, you can, you can, you can expect this shit uh, on Fox News and the Telegraph. And, 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 but, but, but now the, the, the shitting on doomers, uh, you know, showing up. Uh, in, in in these websites that that uh, and, and 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 nobody can deny this that this is happening. Yeah, I d- I don't know why we've suddenly white doomers have become sort of the straw man of the week. You know, it's like it's like well, you know, what is your solution then, Mister Doomer? Like, what's your solution? It's like I don't need to have a solution. That's not part of the game we're playing here. <laughs> Everybody needs to have a pet solution, you know. Um, I've, I've 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 had it since day one. Keep your goddamn pecker in your pants and well, don't let your knickers down. Well, that That's that would have been There's great. Nothing beyond that. It would have been great in about 1750, Sam. But that that <laughs> that pecker's out of the pants. <laughs> the pecker. That pecker left those pants. 300 years ago. Right. So we were way past <laughs> that. That ship is sailed. Yeah. And, that and you know. Sperm cell is sailed. So uh, I, it's it's just a hard time, Sam. I mean, it's a hard time to be a doomer. And, you know, you know it's like getting attacked for, for, like, saying the obvious, you know, for just sort of reflecting back to the planet when nobody else uh, has the confidence to say you know, not not doing it in a vindictive way or fatalistic way or or I mean, just sort of saying factually what's true. Right. Yeah. Like, so two plus two equals four. Uh, we're so fucked. We're right. 100%. You know, I, I, I say them with about the same level of, you know, all of this being accused of being a fear monger. I always say that fear implies doubt that uh you know if you're 100 percent in acceptance of something you're not afraid of it anymore uh you see there's a very subtle difference uh between fear and acceptance and 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 and, and the ingredient is doubt uh, i have no doubt that we are fucked. So I don't fear the fact that we're fucked. I, I, I'm sorry we're fucked. You know, I, I have the wrong shirt on tonight. I should have put on my sorry. Where I am sorry that we're fucked, but it's not fear. It, 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 it is a, 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 it is just a no doubt obvious statement of fact to anybody who wants to read the what is it the constellation of uh, what whatever uh, it's, it's way beyond the constellation it's a fucking galaxy uh, the constellation uh, of warning signs constellation of warning signs it it is a galaxy of the, there are more warning signs that this planet is fucked than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. You know, come on, people. Pull your head out of your ass. Admit it. Uh, the feedbacks are feeding back. The tipping points are tipping. Is there going to be, well, well short of, uh, well, well, I guess, global nuclear war. Can we agree? And, and that's looking more likely every day. So that that is one. I'm surprised they never mentioned that one that uh, in that article that would a global conflict, you know, between the big guys, would that constitute a tipping point? Hiroshima was not a tipping point, I'm, I'm sure, according to uh, James Hansen, but would it be next time? Would that satisfy that, uh, satisfy that man? So, so uh, the question is, would the extinction of humanity and most life on the planet because we lit off 4,000 nukes um, mean <laughs> that the governing board who makes the decision finally declares that that we're in the Anthropocene? <laughs> <You know? laughs> is that I, enough? Is that enough I, for them? Well, Are it's going to be alums? kind of interesting that we enter the Anthropocene the day we go extinct. You know, I, I'm, I'm you thinking know, that's... that's the future cockroaches will be able to tell that, oh, oh, that's that's why they want to 
<laughs> our Tell cockroach historian. The day we go extinct, day one of the Anthropocene or not, the, the age of humans, uh, uh, the tipping point for the age of humans is the day we went extinct. Is, is that going to work for us? Uh, Anyway. Sam, I think we're rambling here. I yeah, think we're, we're rambling. Um, but it's been fun as always, and I'm sure some other head explosion will come along uh, at some point soon enough that we can't keep our damn mouth shut about it, Elliot. And we'll have to come in. And, uh... Well, it's been a, it's been a pleasure, Sam. Uh, I uh, I'm a big fan, honestly. I I mean I I both love talking with you and being your friend, but I'm also just a big fan of you and your channel. I hope everybody who doesn't know any better, who's like on my channel or my Twitter or something, will go over to Sam's and join him over there at Collapse Chronicles. All right, you find him on YouTube. He he is just a mega uh, and, star and, 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 on, and on Collapse over for there. Five at Casino, where where yeah the, yeah. <laughs> The double double C's. We're the CCs of the uh, the cubic centimeter of doom. You can find on on each one of uh, you can get a cubic centimeter of doom on either one of our channels. Anyway, I love you, brother. And, I, you too, uh, I love you. I guess you will get this to me, and uh, we will put it very on very shortly. Channel.